Hey everyone, so welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to dive into some simple tricks for filming. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be putting together a little edit on making coffee. Now, I'm going to show you how to use one camera, one lens, but get three different looks. We want our video to be a little bit dynamic because that just kind of shows the professionalism that you could put into it. Okay, so my first tip for you is getting three different looks from your one camera and one lens. First, you can have a static shot where your camera is just on a tripod or sitting down somewhere. So this is gonna be a nice, safe little movement. Second is I'm filming 4K, which is going to allow me to punch into the video without losing any clarity, even though the tripod is exactly in the same spot. Now, here's the reason why I wanna shoot in 4K. Why do we even want dynamic shots when we're filming a video? One, it's a lot more forgiving. So if you mess something up, you can always punch into that 4K shot that gives you a different view and allows that cut to take place a little bit seamlessly. Third view is handheld. If you kind of want it to make it a little bit more um, home video-y, which is what a lot of people are liking right now in terms of marketing, then that's something that you could do. So this is what handheld looks like. And you can have someone, if you're recording yourself, you can have someone record you, or you can do that if you are showcasing the actual item that you're going to be working with or whatever it is you're filming. Those are the three options that you can have just with that one camera. So static, 4K punch in, and a handheld version. So another way that you can make your video dynamic is by including some slow motion shots. Now, if your camera has that ability, it's always fun to do. Now, slow motion could be used when there's a, an active motion, so something that happens a little bit faster. You're not going to do a slow motion shot on a very static shot. Now, if you noticed, we have been using the rule of thirds, and the rule of thirds is basically keeping things a little bit off to the side. You don't want something to be dead center unless you purposely want it to be very jarring as an effect. Okay, so now for your camera settings. You don't want your exposure to be too, too bright because you, you don't wanna lose any information within it. So try to keep your ISO low. Now your actual shutter should be double your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 24 frames, you want a 50 shutter speed. Let's get this coffee. Okay, so the reason why we want to shoot at 24 frames per second rate is because that has more of a film look versus a 30 frames per second that has more of a home video look. Now for slow motion, we want more frames within that time. So it really, really kind of slows down. So we're gonna be shooting in a 60 frames per second setting. And in order to have that buttery slow motion effect, you definitely want to make sure that your frame rate is correct. And when you're shooting in the 60 frames per second setting for slow motion, you want your shutter to be double. So that's going to be 120 shutter speed. All right, so my biggest piece of advice is to just start. Filming video and editing seems really scary, but it's, it's not. And the first time you do it, it's gonna be a little bit weird, but if you continuously practice, you're gonna get it right and you are going to create some amazing things. Thank you for watching, and if you like this, let me know, comment, DM, email, all the things. Hey everyone, this is a little video on how I make my coffee in the morning using a mocha pot. What we're going to do is we're gonna make coffee today. This is called a mocha pot. And what I'm doing is I am taking this bottom piece, it comes in three different pieces here. Take this bottom piece, fill it with cold water. You want the water to be cold because it's going to heat up and allow that coffee to brew. Now there is a little space for the air to come out and allow it to percolate. I don't fill the water up all the way past this. I literally put that water level to right below. I take our filter, cut it right up top. And of course I have my Bustello. Now I am going to take the coffee, put a couple of spoons, I like my coffee, Pretty strong. So after I put my coffee in there, 
I just take the top of this and I spin it closed. Make sure that that's tight because you don't want the coffee to come up through here. Put that on the stove. And I do that on about a medium, medium fire. So once the coffee heats up, we're gonna know when it's done. It starts making this percolating noise and you can always check it by flipping this. And once this top piece is filled, then you know your coffee is done. All right, here's a little coffee trick. I put my sugar in first. That way, once I put my coffee into the actual mug, it's gonna heat it up and melt the sugar right away. I do this before even putting creamer. So I know that a lot of people will put in coffee, creamer, then sugar, and then wonder why their, coffee, their sugar hasn't melted. This is why. Sugar first, coffee, milk. I take a frother that I purchased from Ikea and cinnamon. All right, so that is how we made our coffee this morning. I hope that you learned some things. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day.